Hello, I'm Suzanne Allen. I'm the Vice Dean for Academic, Rural, and Regional Affairs at the University of Washington School of Medicine. I would like to introduce you to the activities at the School of Medicine. Our administrative offices are located in the A300 suite of the Magnuson Health Science Center. Classes are also held in the Health Sciences Building and clinical training happens at UW Medicine facilities and at clinical training partners across the five state WAMI region. WAMI is the acronym for our five state medical school and stands for the states of Washington, Wyoming, Alaska, Montana, and Idaho. WAMI started in 1971 and has helped our medical school be recognized by US News and World Report as one of the top primary care medical schools in the country. We educate more than 1,100 medical students at six regional campuses and have over 200 clinical training sites. In addition to medical education, the School of Medicine also provides clinical care and does research through our 31 departments. We provide clinical care to nearly 2 million patients per year. We have over 100 residency training programs with more than 1,800 residents and fellows, as well as other professional degree programs. Approximately 1,600 graduate students and postdoctoral fellows participate in research in 56 programs, institutes, and centers at UW School of Medicine. These are just some of the many exciting things happening at the University of Washington School of Medicine. Welcome to the University of Washington. We're really excited you're joining us. Hello, I'm Dr. Gary Kyoto, Dean of the University of Washington School of Dentistry. I want to tell you a little bit about our world-class dental school. You can find it here at the Magnuson Health Sciences Center, right next to the UW Medical Center. We're one of the best places anywhere to study dentistry, ranked among the world's top dental schools year after year. Many of our faculty are internationally known for their expertise. We're renowned for our research, and it lies at the heart of our evidence-based curriculum. This research makes a difference in everyday life, too. Did you know that the Sonicare toothbrush was developed right here? We're pace setters. We've won the American Dental Education Association's top award for innovation. We're healers. Our clinics deliver care for every dental need, including patients with disabilities or complex medical conditions. And of course, we welcome Husky students. We believe in helping our neighbors. Every year, our faculty, students, and staff provide thousands of hours of volunteer care around Washington, reaching out to diverse communities. So welcome to the UW. This is a fantastic place to study and learn. We're so proud to be a part of it. Remember, if you need us, we'll be right here for you. Hey Huskies, on behalf of all of us at the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance, I am sending out a huge welcome to Autumn Quarter 2020 at University of Washington. My name is Allison Cullen, I'm the Interim Dean at the Evans School. I am standing in front of Parrington Hall, we're just between Kane Hall and Odegaard Library, right above Red Square. This is a beautiful old building, the longtime home of the Evans School. This is where we convene community, where we discuss and debate policy, and where we teach and learn and work for public impact and for the public sector. I look forward to seeing everyone on campus when we can and welcoming you to the newly renovated Parrington Hall and to the Evans School. To all of the incoming and continuing students, your generation is already participating in strengthening our democracy and making positive change in so many important ways that are closely aligned with the Evans School mission. During the pandemic, the role of government and the nonprofit sector is so clear in managing health and economic risks, in the rebuilding and recovery that lie ahead, and in supporting community. The Black Lives Matter movement continues to illuminate systemic racism to raise awareness about the role of policy and the role of the government and the nonprofit sector in making racial justice actionable. If you feel called to make change through policy, through public leadership, through nonprofit management, come join us here at the Evans School. We would love to get to know you better. In the days and weeks ahead, there are a couple of ways to engage with us at the Evans School and our mission. First of all, as a student, we have an undergraduate minor in public policy and also several graduate degrees in public policy and management. And importantly for everyone, please Huskies, let's get out and vote this fall. You can Google on vote 411 in order to 
uh, learn how to register. As the great civil rights leader John Lewis, who just died this past summer, said, the vote is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have in a democracy. So let's go Huskies and get out and vote this fall and make positive change. See you all on campus when we can all be together again. Bye now. Hello, new Huskies. Welcome to the University of Washington. I'm Sean Sullivan, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. And we are located here in the Health Sciences Complex across the street from main campus. Our faculty train professional degree and graduate students to become leaders and innovators in the fields of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences. We also offer undergraduate courses on medications and health and the science of drugs, as well as undergraduate research opportunities. So make sure you ask your advisors about these courses. The Rubenstein Pharmacy at Hull Health is staffed by UW School of Pharmacy faculty and students who will provide you services and to the broader University of Washington community. Students, faculty, and alumni from the school are actively engaged in providing access to vital primary care and disease prevention strategies. Our faculty and student researchers are developing therapies, improving care and medication safety, and studying new ways to make drug treatments more accessible, affordable, and effective. In fact, four of our alumni were integral in the development of the first approved treatment for COVID-19, remdesivir. Given the present situation, our faculty, students, and researchers are working to assist with, minimize, and understand the impact of COVID-19 on our communities. And once a vaccine is available, you will find pharmacists providing vaccines, including for you at Hall Health. I hope you'll find interest in the things that we do. And if you do, please contact our students and our faculty. They'd be happy to talk with you. And on behalf of my colleagues, I wish you a successful first year. Go dogs. Hello, and welcome to the University of Washington. I'm Mario Barnes, the Tony Rimby Dean of the School of Law, and we are standing next to William H. Gates Hall on Memorial Way near the Burke Museum and a few blocks north of Red Square on the University of Washington Seattle campus. At UW Law, we are preparing lawyers to navigate these uncertain times and foster innovation within the legal profession. As a law school, we play a vital role in ensuring that equity and justice prevail throughout society. Our faculty, staff, students, and alumni are making impacts on communities locally and globally through their service, scholarship, and practice. This work is more important than ever in these times where we face a global pandemic, a national reckoning over racism and racial violence, and an upcoming national election cycle that promises to be tumultuous. If you have a desire to help people, communities, and institutions tackle significant challenges such as these, then I invite you to join us at UW Law. Hi, I'm Joy Williamson Lott, I'm Dean of the Graduate School, and I'm standing in front of Susalo Library, an iconic building on the Seattle campus, one of many libraries that you'll find on all three of our campuses. The Graduate School serves 14,000 graduate and professional students. You'll come from a variety of disciplines, have a variety of different experiences, but the library is the common thread that you'll share. Your program is your academic home, but the Graduate School is here to support you with professional development, wellness advice, and resources for your entire Husky experience. We put on career workshops, advise students with fellowship applications, and host social and community building events where you can interact with peers outside of your program, though things will look a little bit different this quarter, of course. You can also count on us to handle the logistics of your graduate journey, from admissions to requesting your degree. It's one of the hidden ways we are invested in your success. Another is that we work with your programs to provide funding and review and promote academic quality so that your education is rigorous, high quality, and sets you up for success in the future. Lastly, the Graduate School acts as a convener for UW graduate programs. And as part of that role, we house 11 interdisciplinary graduate programs. We also host events that bring together students from across campuses, such as the annual three-minute thesis competition. 
We at the Graduate School are always open to new ideas on how to make your graduate education a productive and fruitful journey. So please feel free to reach out. In the meanwhile, welcome to the Husky family. Hello, congratulations, and welcome to the University of Washington. My name is Renee Chang, and I am the Dean of the College of the Built Environments, and it's my pleasure to welcome you as new Huskies to the University. The story of CBE can be experienced all around you. Everything from the room that you woke up in, the trees outside your windows, to the transit systems you use, to the closest healthcare facility to your home. Someone or some team designed, planned, financed, or built those rooms, that infrastructure, and those environments that you see are the results of their efforts. What we teach and research in our college is how to do this better. Sometimes this means faster or cheaper, but we also focus on more innovative, more beautiful, and more just environments. Our college is home to five departments with over 20 centers and labs, incredible faculty, cutting edge research, and above all, an incredible educational experience. This is Gould Hall, where our classes and studio spaces are. We have some amazing studio and building resources that we are moving into a safe, physically distanced workspace. Associate Professor and Fabrication Lab Faculty Advisor, Kimo Griggs, can walk you through our fabrication labs. I'm standing in our woodworking labs, which contain a wide variety of woodworking tools, including sanders, chop saws, jointers, planers, a number of different uh, table saws, drill presses, a wide variety of hand tools, and expertise beyond measure. We can go from a log to a building component to a piece of furniture, all in this one space. Our fabrication labs serve a variety of constituents inside and outside the college. The landscape department and architecture departments in particular enjoy access to the labs for coursework, including material courses, digital design and fabrication courses, and furniture design studios. Our collection of tools and processes continues to grow as we try to lead the way for our profession and in the college and in the university. We're thrilled that all of you are here, some in person and some joining from around the world or around the country. And we're working hard on important projects. And we're excited to welcome you to join us in this unprecedented and changed environment. We are learning and adapting in our own built environment and we're excited to learn and grow together. Welcome, I'm Azita Imami, Executive Dean of the University of Washington School of Nursing. The School of Nursing is located in Warren G. Magnuson Health Sciences Building. The School of Nursing educates the nurses who will be tomorrow's nurse leaders and advocates of health equity. We seek students who want to be excellent clinicians, researchers, and change agents but more than that, we seek students who aspire to inspire. We want students to strive for a nursing career that changes the course of healthcare locally, nationally, and globally. This is the most exciting time in the history of nursing profession. 2020 was declared by WHO as the year of the nurse and midwife and nurses have been at the front line providing care, saving lives, and fighting COVID-19 pandemic. Today's nurses play many roles in many places while constantly being ranked as the most trusted profession. They are clinicians and primary care providers. They are researchers advancing health sciences along many fronts. They are executives of healthcare systems they are legislators, policymakers, and leaders of international health organizations. We are proud to consistently be one of the nation's top ranked nursing schools. And you are now part of one of the nation's top ranked universities. Welcome to the University of Washington. Hello. My name is Anand Day, and I'm Dean of the Information School. 
I'm standing in front of Mary Gates Hall, where most of the Information School's academic services are located. Mary Gates Hall is located in the center of campus, partway between Red Square and Drumheller Fountain. We're really closely located to some of our closest academic partners, UW Libraries, Computer Science and Engineering, and the Human Center Design and Engineering Department, just to name a few. Many of you will not be familiar with the term Information School. An information school explores the relationships between people, information, and technology. We investigate the uses and users of information. Our focus is on research, design, and development of information technologies that improve people's lives and demonstrate the impact of our ideas in the real world. We combine technology, a socially minded viewpoint, and a clear picture of the people that we are trying to support. Our research and academic programs are centered around the beliefs that one, information is vital in all aspects of life, two, it has the power to make a better world, and three, that technology plays a pivotal role in creating this outcome. Our highly interdisciplinary community of faculty, staff, and students is driven to create change, and we are leaders of several very exciting University of Washington initiatives. For example, through the Center for an Informed Public, we partner with schools, libraries, and educational institutions to train people of all ages to recognize and resist strategic misinformation campaigns and become more savvy digital consumers. Our work in this space is just one example of our commitment to collaborate across academic disciplines to tackle the biggest problems facing our society and world today, including the future of democracy, supporting health, wellness, and the environment, and using data to advance equity. I encourage you to explore research and course opportunities within the Information School. I wish you all the best as you start fall quarter in this very unusual year, and I hope you take advantage of all the unexpected opportunities there are at the University of Washington this year. Welcome to the University of Washington. I'm Lisa Gromlich. I am Dean of the College of the Environment at the University of Washington. While the beginning of the school year looks a little different this year, I could not be more excited to start the academic year and welcome you, the newest class of Huskies. While some things are different, some things never change, and that is the fact that you as our students come first. You will be guided by our amazing faculty. They will be challenging you, they'll be inspiring you, and quite frankly, you will just learn that they are amazing people who are both kind and very, very passionate about their work. We know that students learn best by doing. We call this immersive learning, which will equip you with the skills that you will need to have a leg up after graduation. Now, what comes to mind when you think about environmental science? It's true, we do a lot of math, we do a lot of science, we do a lot of lab work, we do a lot of analytic work, but there is so much more. We take the things we learn in the classroom and apply it out in the field, anywhere from the labs at Friday Harbor in the San Juan Islands, to the old growth forests in the Olympic Peninsula and Cascades and beyond, even venturing to sea in one of our research vessels. We take a holistic view of environmental science. We connect it to real life issues like climate change, conservation, and natural hazards, and offer solutions to these problems. We are the link between science and policy, governance, and advocacy. So whether you want to learn more about our oceans, our shorelines, our forests, our volcanoes, our atmosphere, our fossils or our fish. This is the place for you here at UW Environment. So as you embark on your journey here at the UW, we encourage you to seek out new skills, immerse yourself in hands-on learning, and explore the many courses we offer at the College of the Environment. I wish you all the best of luck this year. Please do stay in touch, and I do hope to meet you all in person one day. I'm Hillary Godwin, Dean of the UW School of Public Health. Welcome to the University of Washington. I'm standing here outside the UW's new Hans Rosling Center for Population Health, which is our new home on the western edge of campus. 
It's a place where we plan to collaborate with people from across the university, as well as our community partners, both locally and globally. Public health is an amazing field that connects so many things, from the food we eat and the air we breathe, to the way we live, work, and play. Public health has always been important, but recently it's taken center stage as the COVID-19 pandemic has raged across the globe. Many of our students, staff, faculty, and alumni have played key roles in tracking and fighting the novel coronavirus. They are also dedicated, however, to tackling racism and the other social and environmental factors that have created the health inequities that we see in our society today. For 50 years now, our students have been driven by a passion for social justice and equity and a commitment to working collaboratively to create healthier communities, both here in Washington State and across the globe. If you are driven by a passion for the greater good, are interested in health and want to make a difference, I urge you to consider some of our undergraduate classes or programs in public health. Have a great start to the school year. We look forward to seeing you in person when it's safe to do so. In the meantime, please make sure that you stay home if you're not feeling well. And when you go out, stand six feet apart. And of course, wear your healthy Husky mask with pride. Hello, and a warm welcome to all of you. I'm Eddie O'Hara, Dean of the UW School of Social Work. Our school is behind me on 15th Avenue Northeast here on the west side of campus. We're home to 640 undergraduate and graduate students, all of them dedicated to social justice and to lifting up communities in need in our state. We're consistently ranked among the top three schools of social work in the country because we're an incubator for transformative solutions that change lives. Our students learn from faculty who are top experts in indigenous health, community-based participatory research, community mental health, youth development, suicide and substance abuse prevention, anti-poverty policy, and dozens of other important issues. And we send our students out to work with our partner organizations in the community to practice what they're learning in the classroom. During this COVID-19 crisis, they've been instrumental in developing inventive ways to deliver remote social services to those most affected by the pandemic. Our student body is 47% people of color and many are first-generation college students. Most stay in Washington after graduation to work in nonprofits, healthcare settings, schools, government agencies, and leadership roles across many sectors. We're a passionate community committed to anti-racist work and systemic social change. We hope you'll join us in working towards a healthier and more just society. Hi, and welcome to Miller Hall, home to the College of Education. My name is Mia Tuan, and as Dean, I am super excited to welcome you to our university. While we aren't able to meet in person, and this year is unlike anything we've ever faced, I look forward to seeing you on campus and together making an impact. Ranked one of the nation's best public education schools, UW's College of Education works to transform inequitable systems of education to foster social justice and culturally thriving democracies. Our students are passionate and driven to reimagine what's possible in education. Working closely with faculty, school, and community partners, our students gain hands-on experience where they apply their knowledge and build their skills. Our academic programs are tailored to meet the needs of students across the continuum of educational careers. Through our college's partnerships with more than 300 schools, districts, community-based organizations, and nonprofits, you'll make an impact while you're learning, from internships with community organizations, to student teaching, to conducting research with our nationally recognized faculty. For those of you who are still undecided about your pathway here, Please consider the impact that you could have on the next generation of students and your community with a degree in education. I'm wishing you a safe start to the year and I'm so glad to welcome you to our Husky community. Hello and welcome to the University of Washington and the College of Engineering. 
My name is Nancy Albritton. I'm the Dean of the College of Engineering. As a biomedical engineer, I've always been excited about what engineering can contribute to the world. And at this time in our history, I'm particularly excited about how our College of Engineering is positioned to be a worldwide leader. Engineers are problem solvers who design innovative technologies. They find ways to harness new energy, confront climate change. We're building resilient buildings and infrastructure to keep us safe. We're creating just amazing products that we don't think we even need until we learn about them and begin to use them. We are firmly committed to preparing our students for success both in and out of the classroom. Our engineering peer educator program helps first year engineering undeclared students transition into the community while providing upper class students with leadership and mentorship opportunities. We also offer programs such as Engineering Academic Center and the Career Center at Engineering, which provides support from your first day on campus. We provide a project-based real-world learning experience. Our students build rovers, robots, hybrid vehicles. They partner with industry through our industry capstone program. Well, I'd hope to welcome you to the College of Engineering in person. I'm certain that you will be able to pursue your passions and succeed at the University of Washington. I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome you to our campus. Greetings, I'm Frank Hodge, Dean of the Foster School of Business. I wanna join my colleagues in welcoming you to the University of Washington. You've made a great choice. You're joining a world-class institution. Behind me is Packard Hall, the main business school building of the Foster School. Packard Hall is one of several buildings that make up the Foster School. We will celebrate the opening of a new building in late 2021 called Founders Hall, a welcoming and inclusive space built out of mass timber with native art, a diversity lounge, and additional classrooms. At the Foster School, we strive to be better together better tomorrow. How are we better tomorrow? By being innovative, having a growth mindset, and seeking excellence in everything we do. We are committed to continuous improvement. We, and I mean all students, faculty, and staff at the Foster School, challenge each other every day to be better tomorrow than we are today. We work together to create tomorrow's community leaders by developing frameworks for tackling real world complex unstructured problems in ethically sound ways. How are we better together? By being inclusive and welcoming everyone who comes through our doors and everyone in the communities we serve. Being together and coming together to make a difference in our communities is how we do things at the Foster School of Business. Together, we create futures. Come visit us. At the Foster School, we are dedicated to developing leaders who will better humanity through business. Welcome and go dogs. Greetings, new Huskies. I'm Robert Stacy, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences here on the beautiful Liberal Arts Quad. On behalf of the faculty, I want to add my welcome to the University of Washington. We're excited for you to join our community as you embark on your college experience. This has been an unusual year, to say the least. Your perseverance and dedication through it have been impressive, and it will serve you well during your time at UW and beyond. The College of Arts and Sciences is the heart of the UW's academic program. Regardless of your major, Every single one of you will experience a course in arts and sciences during your time at UW. But we hope your experience in the college will go far beyond the requirements for your degree program. In the college, you can explore the arts, humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences through over 100 majors and minors. And you can take courses in a wide variety of areas based on your interests. We encourage you to explore 
and try something new. Consider taking courses on topics outside your comfort zone. Look into opportunities to do research or study abroad when it is safe to do so again. You may discover a new interest or connect with others in unexpected ways. So, congratulations and welcome to the UW's College of Arts and Sciences. We are delighted that you're here. Hello and welcome to the University of Washington. My name is Joseph Jaynes and I'm an associate professor in the Information School. I'm also the University Marshal and in that role I preside at official academic ceremonies like today's new student convocation. I'm here in the beautiful Meany Theater and in a moment the ceremony will get started. But I wanted to do something a little different today. If this was a typical convocation day, I'd be walking over to Heck Edmondson Pavilion for the ceremony, and I'd see many of you and your families along the way. But we all know this year is different, very different. Many of you aren't here, so you're not able to experience this campus and its beauty, to walk the grounds that Huskies have treasured for generations. So before we start, I thought I'd share with you a few of my favorite places on campus, and at the same time, introduce you to some of our, your, university's history and traditions. We should note that the land on which the university stands was once the land of the Coast Salish peoples. You'll hear that acknowledgement at the start of all the academic ceremonies of the university, including today's convocation. Let's start at a secluded spot that you might walk by a hundred times and never know it's there. It's called Sylvan Grove. Standing watch here are the four ionic columns that form the grand entrance to the first Territorial University of Washington building, which was constructed in 1861 on a rise in what is now downtown Seattle. At that time, Washington wasn't yet a state, and Seattle was a small village of about 300 people. Replicas of these columns are featured at convocation and commencement. They are the symbolic bookends of your undergraduate years, and it's a tradition for new students to visit the grove and touch the columns. They represent our beginnings as a university, and they await your arrival as you begin your journey as a University of Washington Husky. Just west of Sylvan Grove is the Rainier Vista, a spectacular landscape that provides an uninterrupted view from our campus to Mount Rainier, some 60 miles to our southeast. The Vista connects the main campus to Husky Stadium, where you'll graduate in four years. At your commencement, you'll walk into the stadium behind a banner called a gonfalon, a word that comes to us from 12th century Florence, Italy, where each district had a unique gonfalon that heralded its entry at gatherings. Each of the university's 16 schools and colleges has its own distinctive gonfalon, which we've arranged here in founding order, beginning with the College of Arts and Sciences and ending with the School of Public Health. The Vista was designed by the Olmsted brothers for the Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition, a World's Fair held here in 1909. The founders of Seattle, many of whom also helped establish the university, were thinking world class even back then. The Olmsted plan and the exposition greatly influenced the development of our campus, including another of my favorite locations, Drumheller Fountain, which if I look out my window just right, I can see from my office. Drumheller Fountain was a gift to the university in 1961 for our centennial. It sits in a pond that was the centerpiece of the 1909 exposition. In days gone by, unsuspecting freshmen were occasionally uh, introduced to this body of water, leading to its nickname of the Frosh Pond, but we don't do that sort of thing anymore. From the fountain, you can see what is in many ways the crossroads of our campus, Red Square. Red Square is dominated by the majestic facade of Suzalo Library, built in 1927 in the collegiate Gothic architectural style. Students today love the Hogwarts-style reading room on the top floor, one of the most magnificent places on campus. 
The library is named for a former president who in the 1920s laid out a vision of the University of Washington as a university of a thousand years. And if you're going to build a university of a thousand years, this is the library you put right in the middle of it. In this library, and in every other building and corner of this university, is represented a substantial chunk of the sum of human knowledge. And our faculty and students are adding to that every day. There are also substantial gaps. Questions unanswered and unasked, voices unheard and unrecorded. And all of this now lies before you. Our campus is beautiful all year round. And one of our most cherished spots is the quad. In the spring, people from all over the world come to see the cherry trees bloom here, and you can see why. The buildings that surround the quad were built during the Great Depression in the mid-1930s, a sign of continuing faith in the future, despite the hardships that many endured. Just northwest of the quad is Denny Hall, the first building that was erected on this campus in 1895. Denny Hall houses the only other relic that was moved from the Territorial University, a 400-pound bell that was purchased during the Civil War and brought around Cape Horn to Seattle. It rang for the first time in 1862, and it rings now for homecoming. Well, we've seen a little bit of the campus, and of course our last stop has to be Meany Hall, where we're holding today's ceremony. Meany also traces its origin back to the 1909 exposition. Today, the hall regularly hosts dance recitals, musical performances, and a variety of other events. And today, us. As you can see, I've changed into my cap and gown. The robes we wear at academic ceremonies visually symbolize our connection to the scholars of the past. You see, it's not just this university's life and traditions you are joining today. You are entering into the life and traditions of a continuous body of learning that goes back centuries all around the world. Our connection to that body of knowledge is also embodied in a special ritual object that the university marshal carries, that's me, at formal academic ceremonies, like today's convocation, the university mace. The mace is an ancient symbol of authority that reminds us that universities are custodians, both of enduring traditions of learning and of the power they bestow on those who come to learn. The University of Washington mace is topped by a lovely rendition of the fountain and embellished with finely wrought metal reliefs of the university seal, the Territorial University, and Denny Hall. The mace, our academic robes, and our traditions are symbolic reminders that unite where we are now with what has brought us here. Right now, you are ending one stage of your lives and starting another. So I want you to take a moment right now, stop, and mark the significance of what you've achieved so far and the people who've helped you along the way. And then think about your goals for the future. Today is likely a major milestone in your lives, and we mark that milestone with this opening convocation. OK, I think we're ready to get started. I hope you enjoyed seeing our campus, and I can't wait to see you all here sometime soon. Let's go. New Huskies, family and friends, welcome to the University of Washington's new student convocation. Please join me in welcoming to Meany Theater the President's Party, led by University Marshal Joseph James, with President Anna Marie Kause. Provost Mark Richards. 
Vice President for Student Life, Denzel Sweet. Vice Provost and Dean of Undergraduate Academic Affairs, Ed Taylor. And Senior Lecturer in the Department of Philosophy, Dr. Ian Schnee. Also joining us remotely are eight members of the University of Washington Board of Regents. They are Regent Rogelio Riojas, Chair of the Board. Regent Blaine Tamaki, Vice Chair of the Board. Regent Joanne R. Harrell. Regent Jeremy Jake. Regent Libby McPhee. Regent Christina Pogosian, the student member of the board. Regent Constance Rice. Regent David Zeke. We'd like to begin this ceremony by acknowledging the land on which the university rests, the lands of the Coast Salish peoples, which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Today, we celebrate together. The 2020 University of Washington New Student Convocation will be opened with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner by Sidney Belden, an incoming student majoring in vocal performance. It is now my very great pleasure to introduce to you the President of the University of Washington, Dr. Anamari Kause. Hello, new Huskies, and welcome. As we begin a new academic year that's unlike anything we've ever had in our history, I'm incredibly proud of you for diving wholeheartedly into your Husky experience. Whether you're beginning your college career or continuing it as a transfer student, we know you face challenges your predecessors did not. Your professors, instructors, academic advisors, librarians, all of us wish that we could be here together welcoming you to one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. But they also recognize what you already know. Your drive, curiosity, and talent are not diminished by distance. Many things are out of the ordinary right now, but I want to spend a little time on some of the things that haven't changed about what we refer to as the Husky experience. This year, like every year, your Husky experience will be unique to you. Wherever you are, you will create your own kaleidoscope of learning, 
friendships, and personal discovery. You'll form communities. You may join a club or run for student government. You may pursue research or nurture a hidden talent. Your journey will contain triumphs and some disappointments, and you'll learn so much along the way. These experiences will enrich your life and the lives of everyone around you. This year, like every other year, your faculty are thrilled to be part of your Husky experience. They bring a wealth of experience, passion, and knowledge to their classes. They've also spent months devising creative ways to make sure that their virtual classrooms provide you with truly meaningful learning experiences. I've seen how much these extraordinary instructors have risen to this challenge, and I can't wait to see you do the same. Of course, things are different. In a normal year, I would be welcoming you from Heck Edmondson Pavilion. You'd be sitting together on the floor of Alaska Airlines Arena, and you'd be surrounded by so many of those who have supported you throughout the years, cheering you on as you take this next step in your life. But this year, we can't gather there. Yet the bonds that make us a Husky family are just as strong. And my gratitude goes out to the moms, dads, siblings, grandparents, guardians, or husband, wives, and children who have supported your achievements. My admiration for them has never been greater. Families, we know how hard these last few months have been in every way. Students, if you're with your family right now, please give them a huge thank you. And if not, please send them a really fantastic text because their love and support has been and will be a big part of your success now and throughout your lives. Our mission of providing unparalleled education to our students is not defined by proximity. It's defined by our values, and our commitment to excellence. Part of honoring that commitment is keeping our campus safe and healthy and working together as a community to prevent the spread of COVID-19. I know all of us will do our part to bring this pandemic under control as quickly as possible so we can get back to a new and better normal as quickly as possible. Whether you're on or off campus, I trust you to honor the Husky PAC pledge. It signals your commitment to following best practices, to treating each other with kindness and respect, and doing the things that we know will prevent the spread of the virus. When you do come onto campus, you'll see a big W on two of our main entrances. So it should be easy to remember the three W's. Wash your hands, wear a mask, watch your distance. Your health and well-being are essential to your ability to thrive in and out of the classroom. At the University of Washington, we are keenly, deeply aware that well-being doesn't just mean physical health, though. It also includes a feeling of being welcomed and included in a community. For our black, indigenous, and students of color, we recognize that you faced obstacles and that you're carrying burdens that you should never have to bear. We stand with you and commit to the hard, persistent work that will be needed to lift those barriers and remove those burdens. To all of you, as you make this transition, don't be afraid to ask for help or to show your vulnerability. These are not signs of weaknesses. They're signs of strength. We're here for you, and I encourage you to be there for each other. I can't predict the future, but I hope and expect that you will all eventually continue your Husky experiences on campus 
and in the classrooms, labs, and libraries that are waiting for you. But until that day, remember, your education and your lives are not on hold. Your journey continues, and it continues to matter immensely how you use your time and talent in the months and years ahead. Now, before I close, I want to have a little fun. Typically, on Convocation Day, we'd have a chance to take our pictures together. So I challenged my crew to come up with a way for that to happen today. And I've been told that with a little technological magic, I can take a selfie of all of us together. So now let's give it a try. One, two, three, smile. We did it! We are honored and excited to usher you into this new phase. Your adventure begins now. Welcome to the University of Washington. And now, I'd like to introduce to you the man who oversees all of the units on campus that will serve as your support crew on this extraordinary journey you're about to begin. As the Vice President for Student Life, he oversees such diverse areas as food and housing, the Counseling and Career Centers, student publications, our recreational sports programs, and the Center of Student Life and Student Government, the Husky Union Building, or the Hub. It is a huge responsibility, and we are very privileged to have a uniquely qualified leader in this role. Please join me in welcoming our Vice President for Student Life, Dr. Denzel Sweet. Hello, new Huskies. Whether you're tuning in from right here in Washington or from locations around the world, I am thrilled to welcome you to the 2020-2021 academic year. It goes without saying that this will be a year unlike any other. In fact, each of you is making history right now. While it is sometimes hard to imagine looking back on this past year without focusing just on the negative, when we do reflect on this moment in history, as individuals and as a society, what will really stand out is what we chose to do with this time, how we chose to navigate these uncertain waters and extraordinary circumstances, and come together as a community in the face of unprecedented challenges. For our part, we have been busy all summer preparing for you to join us and could not be more excited that the start of the school year has finally arrived. And each of us welcoming you here today represents just a small portion of the many people who are passionate about helping you have a successful Husky experience. We in the Division of Student Life are here to help guide and support you as you embark on this transformational journey of discovery. We're here to listen when times get tough, help you with career choices, and make sure that you have a friendly and inclusive community within the larger university environment. We also offer a wide variety of activities to enhance your personal health, which we know is important to your overall academic success. Our mission continues, even in this remote environment. We've adapted our programs and services to support your success, your growth, connections, and well-being. We've created virtual spaces for you to find opportunities to connect and engage with your fellow Huskies across the UW and beyond. We've adapted recreational activities as a way for you to explore fun and active pursuits on your own or with your fellow Huskies, including virtual intramurals and free virtual mindfulness and fitness classes. We are also offering remote counseling and mental health support in a variety of formats and languages. And you can access online support and other content to proactively support your self-care and wellness. Student Life, in conjunction with our partners in the Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity, the Graduate School, the Undergraduate Academic Affairs Division, and others serve as the hub of many of the activities that complement your academic pursuits. And make no mistake, your academic pursuits need to remain your number one priority. 
but you must also get involved. And I want you to hear me when I tell you that your UW experience, it will be incomplete if all you do is go to class, go home, and study all night. We know from years of experience and research that students who participate in clubs and organizations, who get involved in their residence hall association, attend events on campus, or who hold officer positions in student government, these students graduate at higher rates, they are more satisfied with the college experience, they have better grades, and they are less likely to drop out. So do well in your courses, absolutely, but also get involved with your university at every level, whether virtually or if you're joining us in person. Start with the faculty, but also include our wonderful staff and your fellow students. And speaking of students, I would now like to introduce to you two individuals who've been making the most of their Husky journey. Camille Hatwick is a sociology major and is starting her senior year as the president of the Associated Students of the University of Washington. Aaron Yared is earning a Juris Doctor degree at the university's School of Law and is president of the Graduate and Professional Student Senate. They'll both be speaking to you from their homes. You'll hear first from Camille and then Aaron. Hi, everybody. My name is Camille Hatwig and I'm your student body president. It's an honor to be speaking in front of the next class of the future industry leaders, politicians, scientists, doctors, artists, and writers. I remember my convocation so vividly and I never could have guessed that I would be here speaking to you all three years later. I'm sure many of you feel similarly uncertain. Your paths may seem more murky than ever before. There's so much unpredictability in the world right now during a time in our lives in which we're already supposed to be uncertain about where the future will take us. I want you all to pause and reflect on this moment. You all have taken the incredibly brave first step of continuing your education and fighting for our future in the middle of one of the most frightening and unsteady moments of our collective history. Not only are you entering college with all of the normal fears of what will I major in and should I go to office hours, but also so many deeper fears that I know are impacting every single one of us each day. The perseverance, the courage, and the resilience it takes to be here does not go unnoticed. You all are accomplishing so much by simply taking this first step, and I am so proud to be welcoming you into our Husky family. Now, keep being brave and know that you are not alone. You will each face your own unique obstacles over the next few years, and you will overcome them with the same courage and perseverance that you are showing here today. But now, you'll be overcoming those obstacles as a part of a much larger community and family. If there is one piece of advice I can share with each and every one of you, it is to ask for help. Huskies look out for each other. We're here to support you. And know that in your hardest moments, there will always be people to turn to here in the Husky family. There is strength in community and courage in vulnerability. With that said, let's stick together and help the world. Welcome to you, Dub, and go dogs. Hello Huskies, my name is Aaron Yard and I am the president of the Graduate and Professional Student Senate. I'd like to welcome you all to a historic year here at UW. If these past few months have shown us anything, it's that there are a lot of people hurting right now, but it's also shown us that we are resilient and strong. While we may not know exactly when we will be able to see each other in person again, if we work together and support one another, I know that we will make it through it. Echoing what Dr. Sweet said, this is my advice to all of you, graduate and undergraduate alike. You are about to embark on a formative and life-changing journey that will be equal parts exhilarating, rewarding, and downright frustrating. You may think that you can white knuckle your way through it on your own, but I promise you, you will go so much farther if you utilize the community of peers around you. The first few months of my 1L year at the law school, I thought I could go it alone. It was my first year at a new campus, 
And it had taken so long to build a support system of friends and mentors at UW Bothell, where I got my bachelor's and master's. I didn't think it would be worth going through all of that all over again. As a result of this, my first quarter was infinitely harder and so much more stressful than it needed to be. It was then that I realized that I needed to make a change, which brought me to the Graduate and Professional Student Center, a community where graduate students from all of the schools on campus can come together and support one another. Looking back on it, I don't know how I got through that first quarter without having any kind of support system in place. It may seem like extra work, but I promise you, the benefits far outweigh the costs. Join clubs, sit on committees, and create study groups. I know that's going to be a lot harder and a lot less natural in a virtual environment, but that's all the more reason why you need to do it. We are going to be facing challenges this year that haven't been faced in at least 100 years, if at all. But I know that if we stick together, we will make it through. Stay strong, Huskies. One of the things we want to do today is to introduce you, the entering class, to the university community. At the same time, we also want to tell them a little about you. There's likely no one more familiar with the incoming class than our Dean of Undergraduate Academic Affairs, Dr. Ed Taylor. Dean Taylor is a graduate of Gonzaga University and received his PhD from the University of Washington. He's been a member of the faculty in the College of Education since 1994. Please join me in welcoming Dean Ed Taylor. You are not here now, and we are not physically here together, but that's okay, we are connected. And it's also okay because I have a, a vivid imagination, one that allows me to see how things were in the past, how they will be someday in the future, and also to imagine how things are now for you. So now, parents and, and loved ones, I, I imagine you. You're looking at a laptop or a desktop or maybe even your iPhone at the moment. You're a mother and a father watching together, maybe a mother and a father watching apart. You're a family watching together, maybe some of you on the same screen, possibly on different screens. You're in your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom, maybe your apartment, but you're connected. You're an adult with a little more gray in your hair since March, maybe a lot more gray in your hair since March, and that's okay. You, loved one, all prepared to say goodbye to these young people, but you took a pause. Some of you waited to say goodbye, and you actually will soon say goodbye, and you're worrying and wondering if everything is going to be okay, and it will be. I imagine you as people who did your own version of homeschool these last few months. Some of you had some success. Some of you were complete failures. Can I get a math teacher in this living room stat? I, we, want you to know that we are at the precipice of this academic year, and we stand here together. A convocation is always a time for us to come together, for us to welcome you, and for us to tell you that we love you and we're committed to you. This moment is no different. You've loved them to this point. You've swaddled them, you've carried them, you've helped them walk to this point. And this point being a remarkable act of faith, that's what this is. It's an act of faith in them. It's an act of faith in us. It's an act of faith in yourself. And it's a faith in us as a community. And I want you to know the University of Washington will live up to your commitment to this act of faith. To you incoming students, you are 2020 Huskies. You with the mask and the long hair, you are 2020. You in your room, the same room that you've been sleeping in since you were five years old, you are 2020. You who are the first in your family to attend college and you're waiting to come. You who will receive a presidential ballot for the first time and you will check a box. You are 2020. You who participated in your first protest or rally, you raised your fist in your air in your community, you are 2020. You who nurtured your faith online, you are 2020. 
you who can see and smell and feel fires burning in your community nearby. You are 2020. You who vacationed this summer in your backyard, you are 2020. You with your cat or dog in your Zoom screen, you frozen in time on your Zoom screen, you are 2020. You who kind of sort of had a high school graduation, you are. You about to start graduate school, sitting in your home or sitting in your apartment, waiting. You are 2020. You for whom hand sanitizer has become an accessory. Not a good looking accessory, but it's become an accessory. You are 2020. You, all of you, trying to gauge whether or not you are six feet apart, gazing at the stranger, you are 2020. Tighten your mask, take a deep breath. You are the class of 2020. If you've had a moment in which you've said to yourself, this really stinks, that's okay, and there's some truth to that. However, I would contend that there has been no more important time to attend a university in the history of the United States than right now. The fact of the matter is, I've been at the UW for many years now, and we are a public university, and simply put, we as a university are at our best when times are most challenging, and that is now. When we as a community and as a nation yearn for peace, the university is asked to rise. When our community and nation call for healing, we are poised to rise up. When our community needs clarity, information, knowledge that helps us flatten the curve, we are implored to rise. When we need teachers, scholars, doctors, servant leaders, caring, decent citizens, a more thoughtful public, the university is called to lean in and rise. When we are asked to see the interconnectedness between a young person in Beijing, a young man or woman in Brooklyn, a young person in South Seattle, and see the connectedness between all of us and the grandmother in Kirkland, we are asked to understand, to be knowledgeable, and to rise. Incoming class of 2020, everything about this moment is significant. Everything about you is significant. Historians will look back at everything that we do here. Whether you come to campus or not, everything that you do matters. Incoming class, let's zoom in. Class of 2020, there are 43,780 applicants, out of which we anticipate 8,500 students in the incoming class. 7,000 freshmen, 4,450 coming from Washington State schools. 1,500 transfer students with 1,300 coming from Washington State Community Colleges. This incoming undergraduate class, 56.7% female, 43.3% male. No comment on that, it's just the data. This year's incoming undergraduate GPA is 3.79. You've been good students, but that's not the only reason you got in. There are in your class 47 Emilys, 44 Annas, 41 Olivias, and 35 Graces, and boy, do we need Grace. There are 39 Ethans, 38 Benjamins, 37 Matthews, 30 Samuels, one Caroline Squires, and one Fernanda. Nearly 4,486 students from the state of Washington. You're from high schools all around the state. I won't name them all, but you're from all around the state. From Mossy Rock to Soap Lake, Garfield High School, Inglemore High School, Skyline High School, You've all done well. You're from two-year institutions all around the state. Your students from Spokane High Schools who will join us. You're from Moses Lake, Juanita High School, Chief South International, Richland High School. And 20 of you have been homeschool students. Technically, many of you have been homeschool students, but 20 have been official homeschool students. These are just the Washington State schools. But we hold a special recognition for those 17 students who left Pullman, Washington saw the purple and gold light, and made their way to the University of Washington, and you're coming. There are 105 students we have special recognition for who are looking across 
from the Oregon border waiting to waddle into Washington and become Huskies. You from Seattle Central College, from Bellevue College, Green River. You are graduate students preparing to be master students, PhDs, and professional degrees. You're from California, 838 students from all around California. You're coming from all across the country, from New York, from Colorado, from Pennsylvania, from Illinois, from the sunshine state of Florida. And you're from around the world. You're from China, Taiwan, India, Indonesia, Thailand, Canada, Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Japan, I could go on. Wherever you are now, wherever you're connecting, whatever room you are in, whatever Zoom room or bedroom you are in, we are connected. Whatever city, state, wherever you are in the nation and the world, we are connected. You're from around the world. The song by Olita Adams comes to mind to me. It's a beautiful rendition of a song entitled Get Here, in which the refrain is, I don't care how you get here, get here if you can because i imagine a moment in which all of you at some point are in your caps and gowns and we are together and we are standing up and rising up together tossing our mortarboards in the air and congratulating each other and we don't care how you get there and we don't care how you get here just get here if you can if we were normally together now i would ask you all to stand up to rise up together mothers fathers brothers and sisters and incoming students all of you and to hold hands, imagine this, hold hands, raise your hands and say something together, which is simply, go Huskies. So I'm going to ask you, wherever you are, whatever room you're in, to say this together with me first on a whisper. One, two, three, on a whisper, go Huskies. Again on a whisper. One, two, three, go Huskies. Third time, a little bit louder. One, two, three, go Huskies. Imagine this, hold hands, raise your hands. Go Huskies! Congratulations, Go Huskies. welcome, Go let's do this together. Thank you, Dean Taylor. Well, we learned a great deal about you, our incoming class, and now we'd like to introduce you to some of the faculty members who will be your teachers and mentors over the next four years. They are experts in nearly every imaginable field, and every day they are engaged in research and scholarship that is impacting our world in profound ways. The person who leads our faculty is our provost, Mark Richards. As provost, Dr. Richards is the university's chief academic and budget officer, and the person who works most closely with the deans and the faculty to shape your academic experience. Dr. Richards is also a professor of Earth and Space Sciences in the College of the Environment. Please join me in welcoming our provost, Mark Richards. On behalf of the faculty at the University of Washington, I welcome you. It is my role at this event to introduce you to our faculty, the professors who will teach, guide, mentor, and inspire you throughout your time at the University of Washington. They recognize that the last year for you has been anything but normal, and that your first year at the University of Washington will be unusual as well. We all know that this isn't easy, and it's certainly not what you and your families expected or wanted. Our faculty are dedicated to helping you start this academic year in a meaningful and productive way. And they have spent the last six months creating and developing a quality remote experience for you. Our UW professors are taking their vast expertise, knowledge, and experience from the classroom to the screen, and eventually back to the classroom, the lab, and the studio. Even though you likely will only see your professors on a screen for the time being, I assure you that your professors are real teachers, scientists, researchers, writers, artists, real people who care deeply about your education and your academic success. Our faculty includes 17 MacArthur Fellows, 178 members of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, 97 members of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and 189 Fellows in the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The university also has been home to seven Nobel Prize winners. Like you, they come from nearly every state in the United States and dozens of countries throughout Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, and Australia. They received their advanced degrees from Harvard, MIT, Stanford, Caltech, Princeton, Oxford, Cambridge, Berkeley, and major universities across the nation and around the world. 
They represent what is truly a united nations of higher education. Our faculty also work all over the world. I'm the provost, but I'm also a professor of Earth and Space Sciences, and I study volcanic rocks in India. Other professors research penguins in Argentina, use DNA and forensic science to save elephants in Africa, and advocate for human rights in Guatemala. Still others examine how people use social media in the wake of natural disasters and explore three-dimensional printing with clay. And entire teams of UW faculty are researching the causes, impacts, preventions, and cures for COVID-19. The university's global reach is perhaps one reason that it was recently ranked number 16 in the world and number three among public universities in the United States. Those rankings have everything to do with our faculty and everything to do with you. As students, you will get a world-class education from a world-class faculty. As faculty, our biggest motivation for being at the UW is that we love to work with students. You inspire us, and we are here to help you explore new worlds of knowledge and intellectual adventure. Even as a first-year student, you can be involved in the university's mission of research, teaching, and public service. Your education is interactive, so don't wait. Jump in. To do this, log on to class. Get to know your professors. They really want to get to know you, too. Visit during their virtual office hours. Send them a message. Don't be shy. Ask them about their research, their writing, their teaching. Ask their advice. If you are struggling, tell them. Whether they are teaching you online or eventually in person, your professors will help you make the most of your time as a student at the University of Washington. You are the reason we are here. Today, I have the additional privilege of, and honor of introducing a teacher who has long been a student favorite at the university. Ian Schnee is a senior lecturer in the Department of Philosophy. Dr. Schnee studied philosophy and theology at the University of Oxford and received his PhD in philosophy from the University of California, Berkeley. Last year, he was honored with the university's Distinguished Teaching Award. We wanted him to speak to you today because he is not only a student favorite, he has dedicated himself to incorporating new teaching technologies into his classrooms, and he has proven to be a valuable mentor to our faculty, particularly during the current pandemic. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ian Schnee. On behalf of the faculty, it is my honor to welcome you to the University of Washington. You might be feeling some apprehension about starting your university career this fall. What I want to show you is why you ought to be feeling a lot of excitement, too. I'm going to start with a question. I want you to think about these four claims and whether you agree with them. I bet you didn't think your first exam was going to be this soon. But your professors don't want you to just memorize a bunch of facts. They want you to learn how to think and be creative. And that takes practice. So if you're watching this at home with a family member, you can talk about your views with them. If you're watching this in one of our interest groups, you can talk with your peers about what you think. I will pause now to give you the chance to make up your own minds. You learn how to think and be creative. It takes practice. Okay. So if you're watching this at home with a family member, you can talk about your views with them. If you're watching this in one of our interest groups, you can talk with your peers about what you think. I will pause now to give you the chance to make up your own minds. Let's continue. In fact, only one of these three claims is true. The other three aren't just false. They're based on problematic assumptions, which we should confront. For example, if all it takes to succeed is just a lot of studying, then different approaches to studying are not that important. Or if it takes too many hours to succeed, then success might be a huge time investment. And lastly, if you don't feel well prepared because of your background in person learning, then learning in these two environments must be radically different. I want to confront and dispel each of these assumptions. Let's take the first one. What the science of learning tells us is that how you study is more important than how much you study. Now you might be thinking, fine, maybe some wacky study habits aren't that useful, but that's not it. 
The study method most preferred by students when they were given a set of options to rank was actually one of the least effective methods on the list, rereading and highlighting the textbook. Some of my colleagues might be horrified right now. He's telling them not to do the reading, but that's not my point. We don't want you to throw away your highlighters and stop reading your textbooks. My point is this, passive learning strategies, like simply reading your book over and over again, is not the best use of your time. It basically creates an illusion of learning called a cognitive illusion. Your brain confuses familiarity and mastery. Think about a perceptual illusion. The way our visual system processes information can sometimes lead us to make mistaken judgments. To me, the pixel values in squares A and B seem totally different, even if I know better. In the same way, passive learning strategies, like reading the material over and over again, can seem valuable and feel valuable, even if they aren't. Instead, what's effective are study methods that challenge your brain. Your instructors want you to embrace active learning strategies that force you to make decisions, take a stand, and learn from your mistakes. I love it when students make mistakes. And it's not because I'm mean. It's because I know that an atmosphere where students are comfortable taking risks and learning through doing is the best way to learn. OK, let's see if you've got it. Let's say that I'm teaching kids to toss bean bags. One group just practices throwing in a bucket that's four feet away. Group two practices throwing into two buckets, one at three feet and one at five feet. Now I test the kids to see who is better at throwing at a four foot distance. Who do you think is better, the kids from group one or group two? I'll pause for a second and let you think about it. I don't want you to just guess. I want you to defend your answer with an explanation about why that group performed better. If you'd like, go ahead and talk with your neighbors about your views. Like writing it down physically helps me. Yeah. 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 Highlighting. Yeah. Highlighting. Making it cute. All going back over loud. everything. I don't yeah. want you to Saying like it out loud. Somebody yeah. else, maybe. Yeah. Going to office hours are always really helpful to you know, office, yeah. 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 About your views. Yeah, your TAs and your professors are always there to help you. Yeah. Let's talk about the results. Yeah. Group two performed better. Yeah. You know, going long that was the right answer. Time, but think about how surprising like that is. Group yeah, one trained at nothing but that task, throwing it four feet away. Group two never practiced at throwing at the four foot distance, and yet they were still better at it. The explanation is that varied practice challenges your brain more. And the feedback from making different sorts of mistakes is actually how your mind and body learn. Now, if you're tuned into what I'm saying, you might have all sorts of questions in your head. What about basketball players? Don't they just practice free throw shots for hours on end? Actually, they do exactly what I'm telling you. Watch tape of an elite athlete like a basketball player doing deliberate practice, or just watch them warm up before a game. They are constantly moving around the court and changing up their shots. They've actually performed this same study with free throw shooting. One group just trained from the free throw line, and group two mixed it up, alternating between free throw shots and three point shots. Even though group one shot way more free throws during the practice phase, group two was still better at free throw shooting than them. This same lesson applies to academics. If you embrace challenges, then you will learn more. Now, you might be thinking, great, so what he's telling us is, we have to do the reading and use our highlighters. We also have to make flashcards, endlessly quiz ourselves. How is all of this possible? Especially now when our lives are more complicated than ever. I have two points for you. First, what I'm telling you doesn't have to take any more time. Your instructors have activities and opportunities built into class, and what you need to do is dive in and construct your own understanding. I'm telling you, go for it. Share your opinions. Take risks. You might make mistakes, but you will learn from it. Here's my second point. We know that these are difficult times, that you have more distractions and complications in your life than ever before. And each one of you is an individual with personal circumstances that will determine how much time you have for any one assignment or class. My message is that quality is more important than quantity. I want to show you how to use your time as effectively as possible. Activities that force you to be creative and to make mistakes 
are the way to lead to deep learning. That might sound challenging. Maybe if this were an in-person quarter, then you think you could pull it off. But you feel totally unprepared for learning online. This is my most important message for you. You are ready for this. Learning online and in person are not fundamentally different. Consider this. Maybe you were skeptical when I started bringing out studies of kids throwing bean bags or basketball players. What does that have to tell me, you might be thinking, about reading Audre Lorde or learning about quantum mechanics? It turns out it can tell us a whole lot. Researchers have studied reading and writing. They've studied math and science. They've studied tennis, baseball, running, pretty much every sport you can imagine. They've studied chess. They've studied competitive speed typing and livestock evaluation. What's amazing is how stable learning is across all of these domains. The most effective way to learn is the same, through challenges, through making mistakes and getting feedback. In fact, you shouldn't rush to specialize for the exact same reason. A bro having a broader set of interests and skills is better for your mind and body in the exact same way. What this means is that learning online and in person are not fundamentally different. What is different are the strategies and tools that we need in order to collaborate with others and engage with the material in an online environment. In the last six months, I have never seen so much creativity and excitement among my colleagues for developing resources and materials for meaningful engagement with the material. Engaging assignments that use the global digital community, like case study challenges posed by scientists from around the world. One thing I've learned is that remote learning has created new opportunities for collaboration. Students practice digital modeling and then get interactive feedback from their instructors and peers, from graphical design to textual analysis. Now, this might look like reading and highlighting the textbook. But in this assignment, students are interrogating the text together. They're asking and answering questions. They're getting feedback from their peers. This is how learning works. In many ways, we are more isolated than ever this fall. But your instructors are developing resources for meaningful interaction. I'm sure I can't dispel all of the apprehension that you might be feeling. But I hope you see why I am excited for classes this fall. I'm not advocating for technological utopianism. My point is that if you embrace active learning, then you can succeed no matter what environment you find yourselves in, whether it's this fall or the rest of your time at UW or your career beyond. I wish you the best of luck this quarter, and I hope I get to see some of you in class. Thank you. We're going to end today with the singing of the school song, Rise Up With Pride for Washington. Just follow the words on your screen. Now, from what I understand, some of you have already learned this, so let's all sing it together. Rise up with pride for Washington, for purple and for gold. From far and wide, we meet as one, as huskies proud and bold. Oh, Washington, we hail to thee, honor, truth, integrity, forever You've sung the school song, and you are officially University of Washington Huskies. So let's get to the kickoff. Are you ready for your class photo? OK. Here goes. <laughs> Thank you. 
What a splendid way to begin the academic year. On behalf of the entire university community, I'd like to thank our honored guests and all of you who have made this day so special. The 2020 New Student Convocation of the University of Washington is now closed.